Hello everybody, this is Ducey and we are taking a look at part two of updates to Encounter Plus to the 4.11 updates on this fine day. You can find a link to my previous video here where we took a look at all of the new token updates and how to set up your battle maps now with these updates that just really make it easy and fun. And now we're going to look at some of the coolest parts, which is the line of sight fog of war updates, um, a lot of the stuff with using the battle maps. So now the first update is when you don't have to do anything to notice. It is that these edges now have a little bit of a blur to them when you're doing fog of war. And that just looks a little bit nicer, doesn't it? Now, as always, any sort of graphical improvements can be a little more processor intensive on your uh, GPU if you've got one. So way down here in the settings, you can turn off soft edges. So if you're on an older machine that was struggling, an old iPad or iPhone or something, you can turn off soft edges and you can turn off, turn on update only on drop. And now it will only update the line of sight when you let go. And both of those things really help it run a little bit faster. But the developer does a great job of making sure that it runs pretty darn well on anything even without those changes. So if you notice the slowdown, check them out. Otherwise, enjoy. Now this next update, any of you that maybe have used Roll20 before and have seen this, oh, I'm so excited to be able to do this now. You can now have Fog of War and Line of Sight on at the same time. Well, you could do that before, but now, if we look at what the player views here, when you move around your fog, oops. When you move around, as long as you've got that token exploration on that I just clicked real quick, fog of war and token exploration, as you move, it will remember where you've been, but gray it out. So you'll notice that here's some goblin tokens. If I move off, they disappear because I can't see there anymore, but I do kind of remember that there was a room there. So this exploration mode is just fantastic. We go through this door and you can see that the rest of the map is still there visible for us. Really helps uh, keep your sense of direction when you're going through this stuff. So that token exploration is on now, which is just wonderful. Very cool. Now I'm gonna go turn off line of sight and go back into the GM mode. All right, we've got line of sight turned off and uh, I'm gonna turn off token exploration. Sometimes you just want a quick way to hide a room. Let me go back into the player view here with fog of war and you don't wanna to have to mess with all of the line of sight stuff or setting up walls. Well, to help with that, we've got a couple more fog of war tools here, which are just fantastic. So you can choose, are you revealing or hiding? So I'm gonna to go to hide. And we've got these two new things on top. We've always had the ones on bottom, which were to uh, just draw a box, boom, and tap to hide, as well as to draw free form and tap to hide. But now we've got this grid mode. So you just click and drag over the grids and it will fill them in or reveal them if we're in the other mode. If we were in show mode, you can reveal by grid. Boop, 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 boop. And you've got this new mode, which lets us just kind of paint on there. So. If you've ever, uh, if you're used to the Photoshop version of doing this, now you can just paint it on or off. So a couple new fog tools to make that easier depending on what you're trying to do. And reset button, which is really handy. Bonk, turn all the fog back on. That's very handy. And I'm just gonna go into freeform, reveal, go back to the GM mode and I can say, okay, well, when you're there, you can see about that much, wonderful. So lots of new options for how you can mess with Fog of War. And just as a reminder earlier, we had talked about how you can go into edit the token here and they've separated your uh, vision, whether or not vision is enabled at all for this token, light source with colors and opacities separate from dark vision with your bright and 
dim radiuses. And notice it says units now instead of just feet. So if any of you are working in metric or you've got uh, a map that's in the mile scale, you can now go set your units and how many units they are. So this is for each square is five feet. And then all of your line of sight calculations take that into account now. Cool. There's one last thing I wanted to show you with line of sight. I've got fog of war off again, just back onto line of sight. And this is for when we've got multiple characters. Let's add some of my players in here. Wonderful. There they are. And notice they did not get added to combat because I am set to load only to the map. And if I want to go to the way I was used to, I can do combat and map and they'll get loaded up there automatically. Um, doesn't really matter right now, but I'm kind of in the habit of having them up there. So I'll just do that. Cool. Oh, and they also came in as hidden because we had hidden by default on when we bring them in. And again, I can just select them and show everybody. Perfect. Now let's say my party has made the dubious choice of splitting up. Wonderful. I'm just gonna make sure I've got vision turned on everybody real quick. And you can see immediately what's happening here. If I click on one of them, it will show me just their vision now. And if I click on no one, it shows me all of their vision together. So that can really help you know who can see what very quickly at a glance. Now, let's say I've got this online and here's what it looks like online. Let's make sure I'm presenting the right map. I'm gonna right click and present this map. Cool. Okay. So now they're seeing all of their vision and this is similar to what it would look like on the external screen if you were doing that. If I go back up to display here, we have this new setting Shared party vision, partial. Shared vision for all party members outside of player turn slash combat. So that means when you're not in combat, it just shows you everybody. But if I start combat, roll initiative here. Okay, it's the poisonous snake's turn. So everybody can see all of their vision right now while it's a DM turn. But when it gets to Jim's turn here, well, we would have expected it to only show Jim's vision, right? Well, there's a little new thing here that we've got to do if we want that. Go into settings. If I'm playing Jim, then uh, token. Here's all the tokens listed now. So now I can say, you know, I'm playing Jim. Please show me as if I'm Jim. Hit save. And now it shows me just Jim's. And if I go out, okay, now it's Henry's turn. So Jim it's not Jim's turn. He's not doing anything. He gets to see the battle, what's going on. And as it goes around, he sees what's going on. But when it gets back to his turn, it makes it very clear what he can do and what, or what he can see and what he can't see. Now, of course, you can change that. So it's partial. Never. No shared vision at all. This means, you know what, Jim? It doesn't matter whose turn it is. You only get to see Jim's vision. And lastly, of course... We can go to always, and then everyone gets to see everyone's vision all the time, no matter what. So shared party vision, super powerful, that helps you keep track of who can see what. Awesome. It's also really great to integrate that with interactions here. So now you can say players can move their tokens that are associated in the web clients. Everyone can move everybody's or nobody except for the DM can move anything, right? So now you've combined this with Jim when it's his turn here, he can only move himself. He can't move anybody else. Very handy for rambunctious parties that uh, like to click everywhere and not pretend that they're sitting at a table. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop that, hop out of combat. Now let's say this whole area was filled with a dense fog and no matter the light, people could only see 10 feet in front of them. Well, now under the map options, we can turn on a vision limit. So we can say, let's say it's 10 feet. It's as far as they can see. Now, no matter what they've got going on, they can only see 10 feet far. These two had dark vision turned on. 
with a zero to 60 kind of a gradient of light. So that's why they look a little bit different than the ones that were set for torches that were set to 20 foot dim and 40 foot bright. These were set to zero dim and 60 bright and it gives you a nice kind of gradient look. Awesome. Let's take a look at some grid options now. I'm going to load up another map that doesn't have a uh, built-in grid on it. Awesome. And I'm going to go into the settings here. We can turn that grid on and off. And uh, there is a new style here, which is called corners. So now this can just show you more of the map and just give you these light little corners. Sometimes that can be nicer to not have those big thick grid lines on there all the time. Now, in addition to square grid, we can do hex flat and hex pointy. So that's saying flat on top and bottom, or is it pointy on top and bottom? And of course we've got the corner mode or we can go to the full solid mode here for either of those hex options. Cool. So for those of you that like the little more accurate hex grids, that's fantastic. It's also really great for a hex crawl. Let me bring in a map. Okay, so we've got this old school hex crawl style map here. Let's zoom in a bit. Now we don't want those square grids. So let's switch this grid to hex flat to match the kind we've got here. Our absolutely incredible grid align tool works in hex mode now too. And I'm just going to go to the top left as always. Get it lined up as best I can. And hit the checkbox. There we go. Now if I was off a little bit, like it gets off a little bit when you look, you know, right where I was at, it looks good. But at the bottom right, not so much. I can hit this and tweak the scale until it fits just right. That's pretty good. Now, because this hex map already has hexes on it, I'm going to make these hexes invisible. I don't need them anymore. So let's say we really want to run a... Uh, hex crawl with exploration we can turn on our fog of war turn on token exploration here and we can uh, drop in i'm just going to double click actually oops place a creature i'll just grab one of my pcs here we'll grab henry cool and he's already got this uh line of sight turned on so if yours isn't showing up you just want to verify that you've got uh line of sight turned on and you can just turn on the default like uh, the default torch and it should be good to go hit save and now you can see as you go from hex to hex you're revealing just one hex's worth of light here's what the player view looks like so you can have them explore hex by hex unveiling the map as they go super cool I'm going to hop back to uh, this other map that we were on for a minute because there's a couple more really fun options in here that I would love to show you when we go back to our map options. We've got weather. That's right. We can just make it snow or rain. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the fog because that's super cool too. Fog. There we go. Yeah, change the intensity, slow it down a little. Nice. DM specific. So this is just how dark is the uh, DM darkness that's showing what the players can and can't see. So if you're having a hard time seeing through it, you can make it real light, you can make it real dark to be real close to what the players can see. So, and then marker style. The markers will show up to the players the way you, however you have them set, but you can also, for your reference, make it show just the shape or hide it all together or show the name and shape. So that's the DM specific settings. Awesome. There are just a few really quick extras that I want to show you before we leave. When we are looking at monsters, there is now an automatically determined Proficiency bonus. I think that's based on hit dice, but that proficiency bonus is starting to get used uh, more and more for different things. So it now calculates what their proficiency bonus would be 
right here in Encounter Plus. For those of you that are playing online, there is a much easier setup option now under settings for the web server, UPnP port forwarding. If you turn that on and you turn on UPN, UPnP port forwarding on your router, it might already be on, but if you turn it on, then uh, that should bypass the port forwarding necessity that uh, you previously had in order to host this online. Much easier setup to just turn on UPnP and try that out. If it doesn't work, you know, routers are all different and get kind of complex how you have it set up. If it doesn't work, you might still need to fall back on the port forwarding if the UPnP doesn't connect right, but that's by far the easiest option to try right off the bat. And while we're in here in settings, let's take a quick look because there are a couple of new settings. Here is default token style. Earlier we talked about being able to set it to either circle or top down. So if you mostly use top down tokens or mostly use circle tokens, you can choose what the default setting is there. And that affects um, the various graphics that appear on them and, and just a little bit about how they work. And those are the main changes in 4.11 of Encounter Plus. Hey, Future Juicy here, just popping in with one last tip. I showed you how you can rotate by holding shift, but uh, on the Mac, a new feature also, if you hold shift and scroll, it will actually scroll you up and down. And then if you let go of shift, it will zoom you in and out. So that shift and sc uh, scroll function is fantastic. I'm using a magic mouse here. Um, you know, it might be different on different kinds of mice, but super handy little shortcuts to be able to scroll with the mouse now with shift. Awesome. So I hope you've all enjoyed all of these new changes. There's tons of new stuff. Get in there, check it out, have fun with it. Again, I know I threw a ton of stuff at you, but this was a huge update. And the good news is there is more coming. Jiraj, the developer, has said that some of the next big updates will be around how the compendium works that will uh, make campaign switching for those of you that DM more than one group different campaigns uh, a little bit easier and you know what these map settings the fact that maps already now save uh, hit points and all of the tokens that are on the maps already makes this a huge step towards uh, campaign switching but really looking forward to a lot of the new changes that'll be coming and uh, this stuff should really help your D&D game so uh, have fun slaying the dragon see you next time